Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good to be with you this Wednesday night. Looking at the sunshine on the outside, and I've got a good weather report for all you that are in Indiana, especially Indianapolis. I think today is the last cool day that we are going to have for a while. We are looking at some good weather coming our way. But, again, next week, it's supposed to rain. Uh, we'll take it however we can get it. We will take it, amen, because God is a good God, and uh, we, love, we love to live, and that's what it's all about uh, for our time and our day that we are living in. I'm, I'm going to wait just, just a moment before I get started. I've got a letter that I received in the mail the other day, and I want, I want to read this letter. While I'm waiting on some to come on here, I've, I've had several uh, prayer requests that's been sent to me either by text or by phone uh, from individuals who need a touch of the Lord. Uh, Brother Tim Floyd was placed in the hospital over at St. Vincent's yesterday and uh, we need to continue to pray for Brother Tim that God put his hand upon him and uh, give him a touch uh, that he might come back home pretty soon. <clears throat> I, I had a call yesterday, and I talked to a family that has a 12-year-old son, and this 12-year-old son, and his name is Ryan, and uh, they are needing, they're really needing a miracle. And uh, I've talked to the overseer, and the overseer put it on the minister's page uh, for this 12-year-old son that we we pray for him, and we're believing God for a miracle, amen. And we're just trusting, trusting the Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to be teaching out of John chapter number 17. And uh, I don't know just exactly what verse I'm going to start at, but... Uh, John chapter 17. We've got several that's coming on, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, some things that God has given to me for you tonight. Our church sometime back, matter of fact, several years ago, Dr. Paul Walker, who pastored uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, he somehow begin to minister to Israel through his church. And he done a study and done a video series of, of Israel, of how that God was calling uh, Jews back to their homeland. And they were coming back in, in great numbers. And he challenged churches to receive love offerings to help bring the Jew back home to Jerusalem. Now this week in, 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 the, in the social media, if you've been paying close attention to the media, uh, Israel has been bombarded again with uh, the missiles and stuff from Hamas, which is just over, over the line. And we're not talking about one or two, we're talking about hundreds at a time that have been fired into, into Israel. Now we know what the word tells us about Israel. God is going to take care. He's going to take care of Israel, amen. And no matter who comes against Israel, God, God will fight the battles of Israel. And, and I mean that. And, uh, but sometime years ago, we got involved from the Lawrence Church of God in helping to bring the Jews back home to their homeland. And I think it was like, it's either 248 or 348 uh, you could give. And for every one that we gave for, that would help bring a Jew back home. And we have been sending ever since then an offering every month. There's not a month goes by that we do not send an offering to Israel. And I really believe that God has favored our church and blessed our church because we have blessed Israel. And the Bible tells us those who bless Israel, God, 
God will bless you. Well, ever since we started doing that, uh, the pastor or the minister involved in ministry to Israel and the Church of God, and we have we have two or three programs uh, dealing how to bless Israel and to bless the Jews. Well, this letterhead right here that I'm showing you on on the video tonight, uh, this last letter I got April the 29th of 2021, and that is the phone number and the P.O. box that uh, anyone who decides to bless Israel with a gift, you can either send it through our church or you can send it straight through uh, to that P.O. box number. And it's, it's Ministry to Israel, uh, MTI, they, they've labeled it. But this last letter that I got from, from Michael Utterback, and he is the pastor or the minister that uh, is over the program there in Israel, and uh, much of his life is, is spent there living among, among the Jews and ministering to them. Now, this letter that I got, April the 29th, and it said, finally, Israel is beginning to open up. Masks are no longer required, and businesses are slowly coming back to life. Thank God. And he said, our centers, and see, we, we don't have just one, but we've got, we've got centers that help them. They are open and packed with Jewish people needing assistance. And, and he says this, after a long time of sitting on their bags, many Jewish people in the nations who sold everything and they packed their bags and had proper documents to leave where they were at. And we know years ago there was a scattering of the Jews and uh, now we're, we're seeing over the years the Jews are coming back to their homeland. And so they had these documents wherever they were scattered to. Now they have documents that they are able to return back to their homeland. And he said they, they have these but only to be forbidden to enter into Israel. And uh, now he says, and the reason they were forbidden to come in was because of, of, the, uh, of the pandemic. Now they, they can come in. And he says, they're beginning to start to trickle back in. But he said, more good news, we're about ready and almost ready to ship a third and a fourth 40-foot containers filled with boxes packed with brand new clothes and, and goods to Israel. One's coming out of Great Britain and one's coming out of the United States. He said, many of the churches in the Southeast, especially South Carolina, they opened up their hearts and their wallets and their checkbooks, and they supplied much of the aid for the U.S. container. He said a special thanks to Richard Marsha Saxon, and he said our MTI regional representatives who have worked day and night to make this happen. Now, here's what I wanted you to really key in on tonight. He said God made it clear that he would supply the needs of his children as they made their way back to the promised land. In the first exodus from Egypt, they had, and this is what the children of Israel had at the first exodus from Egypt. They had, number one, they had daily food. Number two, they had their clothes supplied to them. And, uh, they had clothes that would not wear out the children of Israel, that was. Their clothes for 40 years did not wear out. And he said, it's much the same today, only, only this time. And he's now referring to the Jews who's making their return back to their homeland. He said, God is using. And I, if, I, if I had you with me, I'd say, repeat that God is using. Well, who, who is God using? He's using his Messianic Gentiles, Christians, guys and gals and churches and ministries just like ours to supply the food 
and the clothing for them today. He said, we have found that even our new Jewish immigrants, this is the newest ones coming home, they've got a rough time getting here and a rough time getting started in Israel. Said the Lord makes a way for them to survive. Yes, God will make a way for, for his children to survive. And he said, here in their new land, and he said, it's God's will to bring them and to protect them and to provide for them. Boy, there's a sermon. He said, we can look back over the past 30 years. And, and, and he said, we can testify to that fact that God takes care of his children. Now he says, blessings to you and your family. May God bless Israel the God of peace in the chaos. Supply all your needs in the coming weeks. And he's talking about us, those who, who help. And this one here, he said, I told a young preacher one time, he said, who was just getting started, don't look at the empty bowl in your hand. Don't look at the empty bowl in your hand. Look to the hand of the one who provides and watch that bowl fill up. Man, I like that, didn't you? In other words, don't look at the empty bowl in your hand and say, I've got an empty bowl. But in other words, look to him who is able to provide for you and watch the one who's able to provide for you just like he, he, he provides for his children begin to fill up your empty bowl. And he said that same preacher is now having a thriving ministry. And he said a full house blessed with children. And he said every need is constantly met because he continues to look to a loving father who loves to bless his children. Amen. My, I'll tell you what, I really rejoiced when I got that letter and I read that letter, I rejoiced that God is still providing and God is protecting. He's protecting Israel, Jerusalem. He's protecting the Holy Land. Now, buddy, I'm going to tell you something. I would not want to be whoever that would come against God's people. I would not want to be those people. Amen. Now, Father, as we come to you in prayer, and Lord, I pray today for Israel. I pray, God, that you are the protector of your children. God, you're bringing them back, and you're bringing them back to this tiny land, and the hatred of those that's around this land, and that hatred for your people, that they would want to Wipe them off of the face of the earth. And that's been the proclamation from some who stand in opposition to Israel. Now, God, we pray and we pray, oh, strongly we pray, that you help us to bless Israel. And the promise of God, if we bless Israel, God, you will bless us. Now, Father, I pray for Tim Floyd tonight there in St. Vincent Hospital that you touch him. And God, I pray for Ryan tonight that his mind, his heart, his soul, every part of his being, God, tonight, that you just give him a miracle touch. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. And the other request that's been sent in, the unknown request, God, we're believing for the mighty hand of God to move in the lives of your children. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, amen. and amen. Praise God. Now, in John's Gospel, chapter number 17, 
you will find recorded there the words of Jesus. And Jesus is talking about those that God has gave unto him while he was upon the earth. And he said in verse number 10, all are mine are thine. More in the world, but these are in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back. I, I, I jumped down into verse number 11. And all are mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. This is Jesus speaking now about those that, that, that the Father has given him. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. Talking about you and I and those that, that he chose and, and God allowed to be with him. And he said, I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Now, in verse number 12, he said, While I was with them in the world, and I love these words, I kept them in thy name. Praise God. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. Man, that's, that's, that's miraculous. That's wonderful. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Mm. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from evil. Praise God. Now, what I want to share with you just, just for a few moments, I believe just as we're sitting here, and, and, I, and I may come back to this next week, I, I may not get through it all tonight, but I believe that those who have surrendered to the Lord. You know, the Bible said that, and, and this is his words, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. We know how the 12 disciples were chosen. We know how they were. And then beyond the 12, Jesus talks about others that, the Father hath given him, those that believed on him, those that believed the works that he did, those that believed his words when he spoke. I believe today as we live, every one of us, we hear, we still hear the word through the Bible, amen. We still hear the word through what we read the word, how we study the word. We trust the word. Now, we belong to him, and you've got to understand, if you're saved tonight, you belong to him. Now, there is not one thing that Satan can do to you to cause you to have a fear. And I was thinking about all these rockets that was coming into Israel and how those that were there, that, that they are God's. Israel and the Jew was God's first chosen. And God has never turned his back on the first chosen. He's never turned his back on them. God is still providing their needs. Oh yeah, when they left Egypt, the clothes they had did not wear out. They had 
They were fed food from God, amen. And for 40 years, they were on their way to a promised land. Now, listen to me. I have no doubt in the human sense that even today, some that live in the holy land, when they begin to see these missiles come in, when they begin to hear the rhetoric of all those who hate them. You know why they hate them? Because of the Father God. That, that's why they hate Israel, is because they still, it's called the Holy Land for a reason. It's just not, not, not just another piece of ground. This is the Holy Land. Now, there's no, nothing that the enemy can do to you, say to you, or bring to you that should cause you to fear. Because I'm telling you, God is our great and complete protection, amen. Mm -hmm. We were talking in our breakfast this morning and, and one of the men was talking about over there in Israel with all these missiles coming in, that they have some kind of a dome. And it, it's a missile protection plan. Let me tell you something, Israel tonight has more than than the dome of, of uh, firepower. They have the great protection of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now what the Bible tells you and I in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, and this is what the child of God must always understand, that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but he's gave us a, a, a power, but a power and of love and a sound mind that we would not let the enemy disturb us to the place that we would fear. And I know many of you that, that are watching right now, there are things that's happened in your life and still happening in your life that somehow somehow might bring a, a, a fear, a natural fear, a human fear. But I'm telling you tonight that this same God that took care of Israel and taking care of the Jew, he's the same God that's taking care of you, hallelujah. You can bank on that. You can count on that. Jesus chose the 12 disciples, and, and they are those, not only those, but others that God had, had given him. And Jesus said, I guarded them from the evil one. Let me tell you something. He's still guarding you. He's still watching over you. He's still protecting you. I'm telling you something. There's times when we leave our house and something strange might happen. We don't understand why sometimes we leave late. Matter of fact, I can tell you how, 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 how it happens sometimes. I was sitting at a red light at 30th and Post, and I'll never forget this. And I'm sitting there for the light to change, and, and I've usually always been one of these. When the light goes green, I mean green says go. Red says stop. And yellow means caution. And, and they're there for a reason. And I'm sitting there at that line, and my wife was with me, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, the light went green. And, and, and I don't know what happened, but uh, I was kind of distracted and I, I didn't do what I normally do. I didn't just push the gas pedal down and, and take off like a madman. I just kind of had a hesitation. And all of a sudden, there was an 18-wheeler that came across that intersection. And that's the same intersection that, that uh, John Thompson got broadsided in and was damaged and beat up pretty bad, but God spared him. But that same intersection, and, and, and it was just like if I had done what I normally would have done, it, it would have been a disaster for me and my wife. Now, somebody said, oh, Pastor, that was just a coincidence. No, I think it was the hand of God that kept me from moving into the intersection at that particular time. I'm telling you, God will protect us. And, and, and I know somebody might be saying, but there's a lot of Christians that, that's involved in car wrecks. There's a lot of Christians that, that's involved in this. And why would God, and, and we hear it all the time, why would a merciful God 
Why would he allow this to happen? And why would God allow this to take place? And again, what we've got to understand is we commit ourselves to God. And we commit ourselves to him and our trust in him that every day he watches over you. Again, we got to understand, he opens doors that no man can open. And he shuts doors that no man can shut. And I don't care what situation you are in right now. God is able and God is working on your behalf. He's protecting you as I speak. Amen. Great things happen to them that believe. Amen. Now, what Jesus says that uh, they were sent into the world and they experienced in the world that they were in. Go back and read it. John chapter, chapter 16, 17, I'm sorry. And you, you'll find that Jesus is saying they've experienced many, many difficult and dangerous circumstances, situations. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking at people through this, this media. I'm looking at people that served God. You've surrendered to God. You've committed everything to God. But yet in your life, there have been circumstances that you did not understand. There are situations that you do not understand. But as I look into this camera right now, I can tell you everything that goes on in your life, God understands. And God is able to do the impossible. And he'll do it for you. And Jesus said, I've sent them into the world. And he said, I'm going to be leaving and I'm coming back to you, but they will remain in the world. And here it is, Jesus. And he says, what I have done for them. He said, I have interceded for them with you, Father, so that they would have a strong protection from the evil one. Who do we need to be protected from? We don't need to be protected from God because God loves us. He cares for us. He favors us. He ministers to us. Just like he done the children of Israel, he favors you and I today because of the blood of Christ. Amen. We are his children. We are his children. We are the, the sheep of his pastor talking about Jesus. And he said, I've interceded for them that they would have the strong protection from the evil one. What I tell you right up front, the devil can't do nothing to you. He cannot cause you to fear unless you let fear control you you amen he takes away the fear he said that i want him to have the joy and i i want that joy fulfilled in themselves the joy of the lord is my strength now in saint john again chapter 17 15 what did he say he said i pray not that you should take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from evil. Thank God for the keeping power. He can, he's able to keep you. And the only way he's able to keep you is if you and I totally surrender our will to him. Amen. Again, let's, let's look at this. Not my will be done, but thy will be done. Amen. Now, we know that we are the sheep of his pastor. We, we know that we are held securely in the Father's strong hand. Thank God we're held in the Father's strong hand. 
Notice what John 10, 27 says. My sheep hear my voice. Listen for the voice. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you, amen. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, the children of the Lord will hear the voice of the Master. Amen. And he said, I know them. And they follow me, praise God. Now, verse number 28, chapter 10 of John, he said, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Shall any man pluck them out of my hand? Boy, I'm going to tell you something. That's good. That's rich. No nothing. No man, no nothing, no power, no authority. Not the evil one, not the devil, not anyone shall pluck us out of the hand of him who chose us. Amen. Verse 29 tells you that the Father is greater, greater than all. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. There's no better place to be than in the hands of God, amen. Man, there's, there's times that I've went to the hospital to pray for people that the doctors have gave no hope. You may have done the same thing, I, I don't know. And all you can do is at that point is place them in the hands of God, amen. Now, if we believe that God is our protector and we believe that we are held by the strong hand of God, amen, and nothing shall pluck us out of the hand of God, that we have no reason to fear man, whatever might come our way, God is able. Look back through the Old Testament and, and look how God even... From animals, God protected the man of God from vicious animals. So God God has, he can do it. He will do it, amen, if we just trust him and obey. And if we believe that, then we will not be fearful. We'll be trusting God. We'll not worry and have fear of what Satan or people can do to you or do against you. First John 4 and 4 says this, and you've heard this many times, and I've quoted this many times, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit of God that's in you is greater than any power, any source, or any devil, or any group or whatever. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now, when we look at the reality of this, it, it causes us to be and have confidence in God, amen, that God can do anything. It's a promise that we can hold on to in the midst of, of a hostile world. I'm going to tell you something today. We live in a very hostile world. And Jesus said, they'll hate you because they hated me. How we live our lives reveals what we believe. Back in Y2K, anybody remember Y2K? When everybody was running out and they was buying food, and they was buying water, and 
some of you may have been in this. I don't. I don't know. That that's entirely uh, where you was at at that time. Uh, they were going out and they were hoarding up many things and they were stocking up because Y2K and, and come the first year, every computer was going to shut down. Banks were going to close and, and I could go on and on and on. Electric companies wasn't going to be able to supply electric. Gas companies wasn't going to be able to supply gas. And, and it was the great fear of Y2K. And here we are in 2021. And I'm going to tell you something, Y2K, it was just a fear tactic of this hostile world in which we live in. Now, buddy, I could, I could do some preaching here. We're still in that hostile war. We're still in that hostile world that we were in in Y2K. So how we live our lives reveals really how we live and what we believe. If we live in fear, now get a hold of this, we are showing our lack of trust in God's protection. If we live in fear, we're, 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 we're showing the world we really don't trust God to protect us no matter what. We say, man, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people in churches today. They say one thing, and they turn right around and let something else control them. And that something is fear. Here's what we got to do. And I, I'm, I'm closing here. I, I went a little longer than what I thought I might. We've got to live our lives in trust and confidence that Jesus, say Jesus, he is still interceding with the Father on your behalf. He is still sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I and every blood-bought child of God today. Amen. If we trust Him, and I'm talking about all the way completely trusting God, we will have nothing to fear. And hang on to your seat, and I'm talking about COVID-19 as well. See, the child of God and many of the children of God have taken the, the thought, if COVID takes me out, then God meant it to be. And you, and you know what? If you're a child of God and COVID takes you out, you just went, you just got a quicker pass than we did that survived COVID or any other, any other pandemic or whatever. God sees you. He knows you. And he knows how you believe, how you trust. And I love to say this. Cast everything upon him because he cares for you. Amen. Father, I thank you for that great hand of protection over our lives. And many times, God, we've asked you to protect our homes and protect our children and, and protect our family. And that great hand of protection, just as you protected the children of Israel for 40 years and provided for 40 years on the way to the promised land. Father, we are on our way, praise God, to a promised land to a place called heaven. And you see our journey. You know the path. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Help us to walk the straight 
and the narrow way, always trusting and believing for the protection of God. And I ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, in whom all power and authority is in him tonight. Now, God, touch the believer tonight. And if there's a one that has fear, God, cast it out, I pray. In the name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen, amen. amen. See you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Let's go to church and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And by the way, we're having people come back and it's now starting to be vacation time. I'm looking for a breakthrough, amen, in our attendance. Thank you again for every dollar that you have sent through the offering plate or you sent through the mail or you sent online. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you have blessed the church, that the church may continue to spread the gospel. And we say amen and thank you tonight. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. God bless now. Amen.